Welcome to this week's video, The Fear of Making New Paintings. We all have these experiences, not being able to make a painting, because let's face it, we want our personal painting to be perfect, the best painting ever done. Or maybe you haven't touched your sketchbook at all these days. There's a book called Art and Fear, and what I say in this video is based on that book. Let's start with a quote. Once you have found the work you are meant to do, the particulars of any single piece don't matter all that much. And what the authors try to say here is that we should strive to make a body of work instead of just a single piece of work. So the problem is we procrastinate on making new work. But why is that? There are internal and external fears. Internal fears are that we want our work to be perfect and most of the time our imagination is faster than our hands can paint or maybe the materials are so hard to use that we are afraid. We think there is magic ingredients for successful artists. External fears are for example that they don't understand our work and do they like our work. And all that criticism can be detrimental to your work. But really, don't forget your own vision. It is about your process. So what can we do to solve the problem of not being able to make new work? First, put more time and effort into it. Second, your art is personal and bound to your time and place. Third, we don't need new ideas. Fourth, you are not wasting your time with the wrong idea. Five, your body of work stems from your working habits. 6. A good artist is a productive artist. So let's start with the first point. Put more time and effort into it, because the more we put into it, the better the piece, because the piece is an outside representation of your efforts, aka stop being lazy. The best examples usually are finished paintings. Let's look at a painting by a sergeant. It seems to look like a sketch. But when we look closer at it, we can still see how much effort you put into it. The colors are perfectly mixed, the drawing is perfectly measured, and this effort in carefully and slowly painting this painting shows through, even though it doesn't have a lot of details. And then we have this painting, which is perfectly finished and the sergeant must have put tons and tons and tons of effort into. And now a tip. If you are working on a piece yourself and you feel tired, then go away or look for references for a bit to regain your vision, so that you can put your whole effort into it again. Because if you are lazy, it shows through. This is also true for thumbnail sketching. Try to put more effort into them instead of doing throwaway thumbnails. Second, your art is personal and bound to your time and place. Do the work you need to do right now. We cannot perfectly simulate Chinese art because it is not part of our environment. Just seeing the art doesn't mean that we can make it. What we can make is what is true to you now, which is the influence of your environment and the history that is surrounding you. This quote is perfectly fitting for that. No one should wear a Greek fisherman's hat except a Greek fisherman. Point 3. We don't need new ideas. Okay, let's face it. As an artist, we always hope for the special idea. But new ideas are very rare. There are themes that you can make thousands of variations from, which support your body of work. Having a body of work is more important than making a single piece. We can look at any artist really, and every one of them have a common theme that they stick to. So let's google some artists. Zorn for example like to paint portraits and nude women on a lake. Amery Cassatt, she liked to paint mothers with their children. Or Sargent, who painted a lot of portraits of rich people and also a lot of colorful watercolor paintings. So what is the thing you paint a lot and which makes your body of work? Point 4. 
you are not wasting your time on the wrong idea as long as it works for you. Quote, but what if I did something different? Then it would be so much better. Everything could have been different, but your work that it is now is what it is and which works for you. So now when you wish to change things, you just need to do things differently. Another method or another tool. And you need to learn and experiment there. But if it doesn't work, you can still go back to your established path, which worked for you. Point five. Your body of work stems from your working habits and forms. Recognizing them will help you make your personal work. Discover what makes your piece successful and repeat it. Do more of it. Our work is our form. You don't need to throw them away. There's really no need to reinvent yourself with every piece. Point six. A good artist is a productive artist. We can just look at any famous artist and see that they paint a lot. They make tons of paintings every year. Just look at this list of paintings. This is by John Singer Sargent from 1874 to 1879. He was 18 to 23 years old there. Look at all these paintings. He did a lot of studies and then 1880 he did even more paintings, more paintings. And as you can see, he makes a lot of work for all these years. You already have successful habits and forms, so use these patterns to get work done over and over. In the end, what matters is that we have a body of work that shows our canon. Conclusion. So there are points you probably already know, but you didn't trust it yourself quite as much. If you want to read a more comprehensive lecture, just grab the book Art and Fear and read through it. There's a lot of little goat advice in there. I hope you got useful information in here. And now I would like to know what is your biggest fear in making art? Let me know in the comments. And if you like my videos, please like and subscribe to my channel. Videos are released every Wednesday. See you soon.